Googlers and Lycanthropes, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and things are about to get weird, except that name's not available, so say hello to Wolfwire and his partner, Monzo, with an X. Monzo with a Z is also not available. I want to say that fans dug up where those names did end up in the realm of legality, but I can't remember at the time of this recording, and I'm not sure I care enough to go digging for that information. Monkso has got G1 Monzo's color layout, his pelvis details, and a box-like thing on his chest. If he just had a dab of red paint on his face, I'd call him a solid Mons, but he's another in the lineage of wholly unpainted Titan Master robot modes. His head mode has red paint and a slightly stylized Weird Wolf sculpt. I don't actually know if it's referencing something specific, but it sure ain't the G1 toy or Zahed the Masta's cartoon. Wolfwire may or may not be weird, but he is a wolf and his cockpit's hinge is apparently destined to crack. Mine hasn't yet, but many people's have, and it's not clear why. Um, at least there are cool red windows. And this is a cool robot wolf. My expectations from a modern beast mode quadruped transformer at the deluxe price point are, well, low. So Wolfwire's ability to have good posture, his dynamic silhouette and mostly filled out musculature, the way he doesn't look like a robot person on all fours with beast feet, this turned out pretty well. Certainly his tail is blatantly a sword and the ruby clear teeth that fill out his jaws look kinda weird. And his forelegs are way more built than his hind legs. But man, not only does Wolfwire look like a serviceable wolf, he's a vaguely poseable one too. His tail can swivel its curvature. His hind hips are ball socketed since they're also robot hips. His upper hind knee is hinged, while his lower hind knee is on a very limited ball socket joint, and his hind ankles are also on limited ball socket joints. Wolfwire's midsection can twist on the robot's waist joint, the four legs are the robot mode's arms, and benefit from ball socket shoulders, hinged elbows, and a weird combo of a ball socket and a pinned swivel on their ankles. Finally, his jaw can open, and his wolf neck is on a surprisingly useful ball socket joint. Not as badass as Skull Cruncher's croco neck, but still able to look left and right. Wolfwire's big cannon has a special two-tab connection to his butt to turn him into a mobile artillery wolf. He's also got 5mm ports at the top of each limb, and one more hidden on his underbelly that disappears in robot mode. Mega artillery wolf mode is real good times, man. Wolfwire does follow the pattern of a quadruped ditching its tail and standing up to be a robot, but his hind legs turn into robot legs in a properly clever way, reshifting mass and tabbing the upper leg armor into the lower legs. The forelegs are more predictable, though their forearm hand hatches are shockingly stiff to open up. Anyway, this is all leading to the main event, in a maneuver that makes me wonder if G's Eyes Quadruple U was some kind of prototype for Wolfwire. That torso compression. Mm -hmm. Also, I adore how the wolf ears tab into the cockpit hatch to lock the backpack together. My wolf wires Titan Master net connection works like a charm, so let's head into robot mode. And check out this lovely modernized Weird wolf -a wire Taking the major notes of the G1 Weird Wolf toy and applying them to a much leaner and sleeker sword-swinging warrior body has yielded delicious results, combining strong proportions with a fully on-topic color scheme. The layout looks good, and the silver and off-white paint apps add the necessary pop. I just wish the painted yellow chest stuff better matched the yellow plastic of the rest of the body to my naked eye. By the way, I'd like to call out how cool it is to see that most of the dark blue stuff on the shoulders is done through a separate plastic piece rather than paint apps. Speaking of which, you can flip open the entire chest, mostly to help with transformation back into wolf mode, but hey look, it's the underbelly 5mm port! Hey buddy! Here, let me plug something into ya, make it all uncomfortable for Wolfwire. The other four 5mm ports are still available, and great for holstering Wolfwire's gun and sword. I love that the sword has pegs to look like it's sheathed on his hip, and I'm a little bummed out that it's actually attached to his knee, since it can look a little silly when you start posing him. The bathtub bucket of a chair gun can hold a Titan Master inside, and is maybe a little oversized for Wolfwire's scale. The sword is great though. This weird robot has got a regular Titan's Return neck joint. Aside from looking left and right, you get like the barest amount 
in this direction of tilt, but the ball socket joint, I just can't get it to work in any other direction to any notable degree. There's just too much stuff in the way. The shoulders are just a ball socket joint, and the only downside of that, because they can go happily all over the place, and even have a little bit of inward-outward butterfly motion, is they can only go outwards this far. So T-posing, he ain't gonna do. Uh, there's just too much stuff in the way and not enough engineering to cope with it. There is, however, just a big regular T-socket inside of a big shell mushroom peg bicep swivel that's a lot of words to say biceps I just, I just should have said a bicep swivel and you know what? i'm just gonna say there's an elbow joint that's how far it goes that's that the wrists don't do anything because of the way they transform there is a, wa a waist joint uh it only goes about that far in either direction due to stuff banging into stuff in the back uh if you start to try to move things out of the way it's still not going to work because this plate on the butt is what gets in the way it's enough waist motion for me to get like an emotive twist though so i'm i'm okay with it there are also some uh, ball socketed hips which can if you get these arms out of the way do some full van damme splits gigantic high kick good times there is a thigh swivel there's a knee joint just the one it goes 90 degrees there are other joints in here but you really just, you just want to do that one uh, the ankles are the happy surprise because they're ball jointed so aside from going a little bit forward and backwards They can also tilt just a touch if they are rotated forwards enough You have to make them line up with the stock of the ball socket joint. So if they're Up here you can get a little bit more tilt than if they're down here But that means this guy's got you know a super solid standing base. He can do a great deal of poses. I just wish that shoulder articulation was a little bit more active, uh, only because he's got a sword, and having limited outward shoulders and no wrist joint means I find it's a little bit limited as to how much he can do with that sword. Wolf Wire almost tied up with Chrome Dome to vie for the top spot among the Wave 2 Titans Return Deluxes, and ended up with a silver medal, mostly due to the slightly fiddly nature of his legs. However, in many respects, he's the most impressive Transformers toy of the four. This deluxe price-pointed mainliner feels almost like an unofficial piece that got scaled back for pure efficiency of form and function. Easily the best of the Deceptive Beast Headmaster trio, and not at all a figure I expected to enjoy this much in the long run. Damn it, Mind Wipes Legs. This is somehow your doing. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and as much as I want Titans Return to drop Scorponok and bodied horror cons to go with these guys, I doubt it'll happen before mid-2018 at the earliest. And I hope to be proven wrong.